You know, English language arts might be the most maligned school subject there is. Yet the most hated subject is probably math, but at least with math, kids graduate high school knowing what math is. It really seems like the majority of adults who've been through the school system don't have a single solitary clue what literary analysis is even for. At least that's the conclusion I'm forced to draw when I see jokes and memes like this every day. And the thing that might be the poster child for this whole issue is symbolism. This is the portion of English class that draws the most frustration from students. Anytime I talk to anybody, teen or adult, who isn't a fellow writer, they describe the concept of symbolism as if it were English teachers trying to gaslight them into believing there's some kind of secret coded message in a book that isn't really there. If that's what you think, I want to ask you just to open your mind for a few minutes and hear what I have to say about symbolism. During this video, I'm going to go over some of the ways that English teachers mess up when they teach symbolism, and offer some different ways of looking at it than what you learned in school. By the end of the video, I'm hoping that you'll come to understand that 1. Symbolism is a real thing, and 2. It's not nearly as complicated as you've been led to believe. So based on my own experience, and those of many other people I've talked to about this, here's the typical way an English class goes about explaining how symbolism works. The teacher starts with the basic definition, something like, a symbol is a thing that represents another thing. They then go through some examples of real simple symbols that we see every day. A heart means love, a red octagon means stop, a four-leaf clover means lucky, light means good, and dark means bad. That's lesson one. And then in lesson two, they slam a Shakespeare play on your desk and yell, The floating dagger symbolizes Macbeth's guilt and destiny. The connection couldn't be more clear, don't you see it? There's no way you can't see it. How can you not see it, you stupid idiot? No wonder nobody understands it. It's teaching like this that leads to people thinking that symbolism isn't even real. It's what leads to all the jokes at the expense of English teachers. This is easily the most famous one. The curtains were blue. What your English teacher thinks, the curtains represent his immense depression and his lack of will to carry on. What the author meant, the curtains were blue. Now, I sympathize with whoever made this meme, and with anyone who finds it funny and relatable. But it's wrong. It's super wrong for so many reasons. Jokes like these operate under the belief that teachers think that there is a hidden meaning inside works of literature that's there for the reader to decode. A hidden meaning that does not actually exist. And uh, yeah. In that respect, they are absolutely right. There is no hidden meaning in literature. The author isn't sending you coded messages through a book. That's just stupid. Why would they do that? If it was so important, they would just say it. That was never the point your teacher was trying to make. But the reason so many people get this impression is because teachers often breeze through the specifics of how symbolism works. They give you one lesson with a basic definition, and then they skip straight to pointing out examples in the books you're reading and expecting you to understand them. And if you don't understand them, they'll settle for you just memorizing them. Because it's a lot easier to teach memorization than it is to explain deeper reasoning. They spend all their time teaching the what of symbolism that they never teach the why. Pretend, pretend that that's a seed. It's a rock. Oh, I know it's a rock. I know, but let's just pretend for a minute that it's a seed, all right? We'll just use our imaginations. All it needs is some time, a little bit of sunshine and rain, and voila! But it's a rock. I know it's a rock! So that's the question I'm going to answer now. Why does symbolism exist? What is its purpose? This video has been going on for a while, and I still haven't shown you an example of symbolism, so I'm going to do that now. Watch this clip from the end of The Lion King, and then we'll talk about it. Now, after having seen that, do you think Simba will be a good king or a bad king? Yeah, a good king, duh. But how do you know? We didn't see Simba do any king stuff. And nobody told us Simba would be a good king. That scene didn't even have any words in it. All that happens is Simba roars, and the storm clouds go away and the plants grow back. So I ask again, how do you know Simba will make a good king? You know because the storm clouds parted and the plants grew back. Even if you can't explain it in words, you just understand in your gut that when you see this, it means Simba is a good king. And congratulations, that right there, that's symbolism, and you were able to interpret it. You saw a symbol, and it indicated to you that you should feel happy that Simba is king. That's the purpose of symbolism. The reason symbols exist is to help you figure out how you're supposed to feel about something in the story. 
It's all about emotion. That's the thing I'm going to keep coming back to for the rest of this discussion. Emotion. Maybe you've heard this classic piece of creative writing advice. Show, don't tell. Basically, that means that when a work of fiction directly tells the audience information, that's always way less interesting than when you can lead the audience towards figuring it out on their own, showing them. Could you imagine if The Lion King ended with some voiceover telling us, And then Simba became king and he was a much better king than Scar and everything was great. The end. This is especially true with emotion. Any good writer knows that if they make a character say, I am sad, it'll be stupid and boring and bland and nobody will care. But if they show a character looking and acting sad, that's way more powerful. And if you show a character say, wandering through the rain, that would make their sadness even more clear. That rain is a form of symbolism. It's there to help the audience notice that this character is sad. It's there to help nudge the audience in the direction of how to feel. Let's do another example. In the movie Operation Dumbo Drop, the character Harvey is shown to be pretty cowardly. He's also really superstitious. So what's bad luck? Um, it always so in dark. Snake will come out and bite you. Snakes? It'd get worse. Yeah. And the most unlucky thing, supposedly, is a crow. So what happens when you see a crow? I tell you, if you see a big black bird, you run away. The movie sets that up early on. Then, in the climax, his friends are in trouble, he's about to go in and help them, and this happens. Bird, if I were you, I'd get the hell out of here. Do you see? Do you see just how much information that crow gives you? The movie could have had Harvey just say, I am very scared, but I care about my friends, so I am going to overcome my fear and charge into danger anyway. And we would have understood, but that would be really lame. By putting this crow here and having him brush it away, we understand all of that in a second without the movie having to say a single word of it. We see that crow, and we see him ignore it, and we instantly feel excited that he overcame his fear. That's the power of symbolism. It helps us figure out how to feel, and it's way more effective than just telling us. To understand symbolism, you need to practice looking inward, understanding your emotional reaction to what's happening in the story. Want to know why I pick this movie of all movies as an example? I watched this when I was like, nine, and I didn't really understand what I was watching. It's a Vietnam War movie. What nine-year-old knew what that was? I don't remember most of what happened, but I remember this. Years later, this stuck with me. Why do stories have symbolism? This is why. During all this, maybe you've been wondering something like, hey, why is it that all these examples are so easy to get, but the ones in the books I read for English class were so hard to get? Well, it comes back to that aspect of emotion. If the whole purpose of symbolism is to direct your emotions, then it's not going to work very well if you're not emotionally invested in the story. If your English teacher was making you find symbolism in a book you hated, of course you couldn't figure it out. It's pretty hard to look inward and figure out how you're feeling when the one emotion you're having the whole time is, this sucks, I'm bored, I don't want to read this. Looking at you, the green lights in Great Gatsby. So if you're still in school and you're being forced to analyze symbols in a story you hate, here's a tip. Pretend you love it. Pretend you're super invested in what's going on and try to imagine how you might feel if you really cared about the things that are happening around the symbol. That might help you get through the school year. Of course, English classes would be a heck of a lot more effective if students could analyze stories they really did care about, but that's a conversation for another day. Let's try another example. Watch this scene from Pirates of the Caribbean, with the villain of the movie, Barbosa. And the apples, one of those next. Shortly after Barbosa said this, it's revealed that he's cursed never to be able to eat or drink, and everything he does in this movie is to try and break this curse. We're going to watch a few more scenes with Barbosa, and I'm going to interrupt those scenes and ask you to stop and consider how you're feeling about the thing happening on screen. Let's go. Although, I suppose I should be thanking you because in fact, if you hadn't betrayed me and left me to die, I would have an equal share in that curse, same as you. Funny old world, isn't it? And freeze! How are you feeling? What are you thinking about right now? You're probably thinking something along the lines of either Aw, he wants the apple and he can't have it. Or, haha, he wants the apple and he can't have it. Or somewhere in between. He is the villain of the movie, so the amount of empathy each person has for him will vary. But the point is that these apples being there remind you that he can't eat them and make you pity him. 
And in case that wasn't clear enough, the movie does this a few minutes later. Lock him in the brig. Let's skip to the end of the movie now. And Freeze, what are you thinking about? Oh, he never got to try the apple, how tragic. Am I right? Every time an apple shows up in this movie, it reminds you that Barbosa can't eat, and makes you feel bad for him. If I were writing an essay about this for my English teacher, I might phrase it something like, the apple symbolizes Barbosa's never-ending hunger. But this isn't some kind of hidden message that you had to decipher. That's not what symbolism analysis is about. The connection between apples and Barbosa's hunger isn't a secret. It's something that anyone who's paying any attention to the movie just understands instinctively. To figure out symbolism, you're not decoding the author's hidden meaning. You're decoding your own thoughts and emotions. Pretend it's a seed, okay? Another aspect of symbolism that I want to hit on is that they don't exist in a vacuum. They depend on the context. In your everyday life, do you associate apples with not being able to eat? Probably not, unless you're allergic to apples. Pirates of the Caribbean builds a connection between them by pairing them together a bunch of different times. In another movie, apples can symbolize something completely different. There are a handful of more universal symbols, like rain symbolizing sadness, but most symbols are specific to the story they're in. That's the other big thing that's wrong with the curtains were blue meme. It states that the line, the curtains were blue, doesn't mean anything besides the curtains were blue. And it's right, that sentence doesn't mean anything else. Because it's just one sentence. This isn't a real line taken from a story, there's no other context to it, it's just a single statement about curtains being blue. Sure, the color blue is often used to symbolize depression, but these blue curtains don't mean anything by themselves. The writer of this meme put in this zero context example to make the concept of symbolism seem extra ridiculous. But these blue curtains are not a symbol because they have no context. But what if we made up some context? What if I wrote some stories that include blue curtains? Well, there's no what if about it, that's exactly what I did. I'm going to read you some short excerpts of hypothetical stories that mention blue curtains. And I want you to do the same thing you did before. When the curtains show up, pause and reflect on what your emotional reaction is. First one. She was so rich that she'd never had to do any hard work in her life. Her parents' money took care of everything. But now, she found herself stuck taking care of a baby. Ugh. Things went okay at first. She fed the baby. She changed the baby. But then, she had the baby over her shoulder, and out of nowhere, the baby threw up all over the blue curtains in the living room. Oh no, not my curtains! The blue was a custom color! So what were you thinking about when the blue curtains were mentioned? It probably reminded you that she has no idea how to take care of a baby. Maybe it made you wonder, does she care more about the curtains than the baby? Either way, it makes you think of this character as a spoiled brat who probably shouldn't be in charge of an infant. Next one. Everything in his house had to be green. The walls were green, the dishes were green, the couches were green. One time, a friend brought him a set of blue curtains and he freaked out, screaming, No! No! They have to be green! Here, when the blue curtains show up, they emphasize this character's obsession with the color green. Going a little deeper, you might notice that he doesn't seem at all grateful that his friend tried to give him a gift. And the blue curtains help you understand how unpleasant this person is to be around. And one more. She was so tired, nothing would be better than a nap right now. So she turned off the lamp, closed the blue curtains, and went straight to bed. Yeah, the blue curtains don't mean anything in that one. They don't evoke any emotional reaction, they're just a random extraneous detail, completely uninteresting. See how many different ways the same object can be used as a symbol? Or not used as a symbol? Context is what gives the symbol its meaning. I'll do one final example from a movie to hit these points in more. The following are some clips from the Korean zombie movie Train to Busan. The main character is a dad who doesn't have the best relationship with his daughter. Oh, 
이제 노래도 아빠한테 들려주고 싶어서 연습했던 노래예요. 그래서 못 불렀어요. 아빠가 안 보여서. 你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什么？你在想什